Hello there, welcome to Keys Closure for a fresh new perspective. Things you never thought about, things you never will, and things you wish you never did. Which I'm starting to realize is a horrible slogan, but I'm too lazy to change it. Shogun took me back into a world I love the most. Honest storytelling in which characters and the world around them breathe, move, and react according to their own interests. There is no right at twisting truths and possibilities, or worse, trying to feed their own or their audience's amusements. There is simply a story to tell, whether brutish, dark, hopeful, or a part of our true human experience. I loved getting into the world of old Japan where samurais held up a code of honor, fear and governance where every man held within themselves strong principles for life and power that put them at odds with each other and the larger world. Presented in some of the best writing we've had in a long time. Adapted from James Clavell's book Shogun. You fall in love with the world you see, even as it changes harshly through the era, as modernity slowly eroded the color of old Japan into one in which there would be no more samurai, no more shoguns, and no more severity of purpose or life. Hi. We are fascinated by samurai, and this fascination has lasted longer than they have been active in the 12th and 1800s. We see it as a brutal life of self-discipline that we all secretly wish we were a part of. They followed strict codes of honor that demanded they take their own lives if necessary. Codes of honor that may have changed through the years, but brought dignity to this hereditary sect. While some of our world history may paint them as rogues under the command of feuding lords, in many ways they were the peacekeepers of old Japan, the enforcers of laws, and often the first protection against invaders. There is a certain intense beauty that we are drawn to when we realize that for them, life and death hung upon skill. Victory wasn't about who had the biggest weapon, but for those who cultivated the craft of the sword so personally that it became a second language that could have made them immortal. This takes me back to forms of expression in olden ages. The simple stroke of an ink-dubbed brush gliding delicately over papyrus and telling more stories than we've ever been willing to grasp. The paintings that seem aloof but carry truths to the heart. Stories about life, about the hill that leads home, and about the beauty of spring. In this period, calligraphy was studied from childhood in order to teach grace and purpose. They believed that if your hand could be certain with any single stroke, without mistake or doubt, then your mind could be as sharp as a sword. Whatever they did, whatever they learned, whatever they taught, wasn't a passing craze, but it bent into their lives, shaping who they were, even the mere act of writing. This is, to me, the value of an instrument, or better yet, the respect we give to that instrument. That's why we are so fascinated by samurai, or any other sect of swordsmen through the ages, or even martial artists, because of the respect they gave the weapon, born from immense patience, willpower, and practice. Even a ship is a weapon in and of itself, and the sailors crashing on the shore tell the story of how dark and foreboding exploration was, and yet, armed with this weapon, they kept going farther beyond starvation to meet different possibilities. The sailors of these boats were painters of endurance, the blood force that eventually united the world into the global villages we now enjoy. We'll lay claim to that dark land, then it's back to Holland, rich, having gone round the world. I suddenly had a thought of the Kama Sutra. In many ways, it is another kind of instrument, if you get what I mean. But yes, the brush, the weapon, the instrument, the talent, the art, a period of mankind where respect given to these things made a man more valuable. No wonder we often cling to artists. The manga, Japanese fantasy stories, hand-drawn by such artists, are still some of the most popular forms of media on the world's stage. The anime adaptations keep peaking in popularity every couple of years, albeit becoming a bit more of a fetish, but still. There is a certain grace and dignity when we see someone become their art and do it so well we would never want to part from it. The samurai were respected for this in past eras and were housed by their lords or daimyos who clothed them, fed them, and paid them for their service. A tradition that I wish had been carried on to the present day so that true artists are given their due for their hard-practiced talent. Yet the stories still remain, immortal and drenched with its own sort of inspiration. And Shogun has proven that there is so much of our history from all these different cultures across the world that could explode modern cinema with ideas, with lives and lessons far more exciting and more powerful than what we have now. And because of this, we never developed the great, deep respect of the brush, of the pen, of the weapon, or even AI itself on the tools we use today. Not like the samurai dancing on the open field, or the sailor braced against an unforgiving ocean, or a painter's delicate portrayal of the crashing waves that burden the inexperienced, keeping them from the sight of a mighty mountain. Oh. 
わしは風を操ったりはせぬ読むだけじゃ There is a scene in Shogun that, that faltered me. Well, many actually, but, but this one in particular was very depressing. I believe by now almost everyone has watched Shogun, so I won't recap the entirety of the story except for the past that I'm going to talk about. A Portuguese ship, after months at sea, the crew near death settles on a Japanese coast. It is rather opportune since the Shogun has just died, creating a power imbalance in the nation. The feuding lords are looking for any source of power that could help them claim the throne. Ishido, Kiyama, Ono, Sugiyama. それに、お主は、八重千代が元服するまで、牽制を分かち合うことになる。This Portuguese ship, armed with weapons, may be the exact answer one of the houses desperately needed. Yoshi Toranaga acted so movingly by Hiroyuki Sanada, becoming the fascinating second protagonist to this whole story. On his command, they capture the vessel, imprison the rest of the men, and begin talks with their leader. Well, talks is more of an overstatement. There is a translator who would have helped spare lives, I suppose, but he doesn't really want to because of overlapping political interests. The Japanese lords and masters also have their own political interests. Which leads to a moment that shaped the series. They decide to kill one of the soldiers. It made you feel like life was a fickle thing in this period. And not like Game of Thrones, where the king gets beheaded. It felt more real. More so when it was followed by the death of a child and his father, simply for being more vocal in support to his daimyo. There are far too many examples in our history from all different corners of the world of this strange value to life that Shogun took us back to. Another fascinating scene that carries this message is when the samurai leader Yabu Shige tries to kill himself in order to determine the kind of death he will face. I was honestly shocked, just like the foreigner. And this character being linked to these two scenes is moving because it's not an easy decision. We see him listening as the sailor dies, listening for the final moments of life. どうやっても免れないありさまになった時人がその成り行きとどう対峙するかということに待ち続けたが何も起きなかったやつの最後はただやってきてただ過ぎ去った全てのものと同じようになものも言わずに。At the end of the series, Yabushige himself faces a less honorable death. He betrayed his daimyo in order to avoid death, but found it had purposefully moved towards him because his daimyo had orchestrated the samurai leader's own rebellion so as to move forward with his own interest. <laughs> Only later into the series, as you absorb the codes by which these people live, do you somehow begin to make peace with it. So these moments do stick with you for a while. And for me, it represents the movement of their will, the power, their desire, the movement of the sword, the stroke, or rather how we use our tools, our weapons, our talents, our intellect, our indifference, and our fate, our lives, or even our arts. It is the movement of what we hold most dear to us, whether in battle or in pleasure, because it is the one, like Lady Mariko, that eventually brings about a sharp bend in the flow of time. <laughs> Consider the great misunderstanding in episode 5, the hanging of the bird that led to the death of a man. I had to google if this was a real thing or if Blackthorn was going a little crazy. But it actually is a tradition in some countries to let birds spoil or even other things for a couple of days to make them more ripe or give them an interesting flavor. In Blackthorn's mind, he was honoring the gift he received from Toronaga by letting it spoil for as long as it could. However, to the rest of the villagers, it was a sign of a lingering curse, a bad omen of things to come. The old gardener, a character I actually grew to love because of how well he looked after the things in the garden, the rock having its own place, the circles drawn to perfection, the moss growing beautifully, the watering hole, and even the bamboo trees. He made the simpler things in life look like the answer to a perfect existence. While he sacrificed himself to remove the bud, bring peace to the village, and face the death his master had demanded of anyone who touched the bud, this one act brought a new understanding to the differences between these two worlds. One loose thread could unravel a whole tapestry. You put that old man to death. Over a stinking 
God cursed pheasant. But in another way, it shows the true heart of Shogun and the people of this period. Your word, your honor, is the very movement of your life, the very movement of your fate. Lady Marika reminds him of this. The things we say, the things we do, the way we carry ourselves should bear more weight in our minds than we think. Life has no value to you. Only the meaningless rituals you are trapped in. The boat meant nothing to me. Your words gave it meaning. Let me explain with Marika's own words. The rigidity in which they held themselves wasn't necessarily to imprison or restrict their desires, pleasures, tastes, appetites, and talents, but rather not to be controlled by them. Their willingness to make every word binding helps them gain control over the tests and tastes of life, which, if you really think about it, makes their lives more fulfilling. <laughs> There has to be balance in life, and to achieve this kind of balance is what finally brings you over the waves of life. Metaphorically, really, because if you're stuck in a traffic jam for five hours with no end in sight, you're either screaming or sitting there reading a book. That fine balance makes the difference between a fulfilling life and an overly anxious one. It is better explained by another character in the series, one that could pass by people's radar on the first viewing, but I believe is one of the more engaging emotionally. One of the more personal depictions of life in old Japan, and maybe even today in many places, is that of the closed off man, the one who cannot fully express himself, share his hopes, his troubles. Mariko's husband reminds me of this. He is rough, sometimes cruel, unpleasant, and seemingly incapable of showing his true love and affections, not to his sons or even to Mariko, whom he appears to deeply love. Ahoy. Despite being a man of great power, a man greatly respected by his daimyo for his military might and cunning, I mean, look at this shot. I wish I could do this. You have no idea. He is clearly a man of influence and not harshly or unfairly treated by those around him. But his harsh manner with his wife and his son does not win him the life he would have wanted. They keep that distance, even his son seems like the kind who runs away from his presence. But the kinder Englishman who is ready to laugh and share his thoughts ends up winning the heart of Mariko. And despite the rather sad ending to her story, their willingness to be touched by each other, pun intended, helps them find better balance in their lives. It is all a beautiful depiction of the true dignity of balance. It is that balance that makes the kindness even more remarkable and the strength even more undisputable. And it is this that that Mariko's husband needed and actually learns from the strange man whom he despises at first. He sees the importance of mixing strength with kindness and in my eyes has the most powerful character arc of the whole show. The beautiful custom of making tea for the one you love is in his way trying to break through the trap he was in to show his true love despite not having the words to express himself. But in the end he actually becomes kind. He doesn't kill the Englishman for one even though he probably should have because of the whole touching thing. But he starts using his strength to encourage others and becomes that one soul solitary difference that sharply bends the stream of life, the stream of the future. Hopefully in later series, maybe they will show him actually make a real bond with his son. All this said, beautiful as it is, finding that balance of a sharp sword that won't cut a leaf, that is another way the show taught us to see the value of life, another way in which people go over the waves. The show presents the concept of having three hearts. One heart for the world, one heart for your friends, and one you keep completely hidden. The heart for the world could be merry and drunk. Or as in Toronaga's case, a heart that says he doesn't want to be shogun and doesn't want any war. The heart for your friends could be discovering and revealing yourself and them to each other, if that makes sense. In Toronaga's case, it would be the unbending way in which he carries out things, unwilling to change his mind one set, forcing his friends to act in different ways. And the heart you keep completely hidden, all for yourself, could be so removed from the others that no one would even believe it. <laughs> There are certain things we should keep only to ourselves, especially our innermost desires, our goals and our wisdoms. After all, heroism is for the dead, and stories are for children. 
Consider Toranaga, who shows to the world that he does not want to be Shogun, and yet he orchestrated the fall of the old Shogun, the start of the war, the death of his friends, so that he can become Shogun. But he also faces a strange loneliness because his wisdom has taught him that there is no safe spot on the world and no true friend. If he fails, his sons and daughters, of which must be numerous, would all be killed. He may even be forced to slay them all himself. My lord is famous for his trickery. When he was six years old, his father traded him to a rival Pusho. As a hostage, he learned one truth. The enemies are everywhere and friends nowhere. To show your true heart is to risk your life. In later seasons, it will be fascinating to see him face actual pullback. And I don't necessarily mean him facing a tragic end, he's too likable for that. But there is so much nuance in the story to make his outcome even more fascinating. That's weaving too many baskets. <laughs> So an encounter with someone capable of outwitting him, maybe even Blackthorn himself, would make the best season of television. The inner heart could also be, as Mariko says, the one that helps us face life's problems. Do not be fooled by our politeness, our bows, our maze of rituals. Beneath it all, we could be a great distance away. Safe. And alone. This series that induces such perfect suspense and anxiety over the upsets and unexpected bends of life keeps reminding us balance is better and that people are willing and capable to learn with the sword in movement over the waves. And maybe soon they will see the mountain. I'm always on the hunt for new or hidden gems like this, so if you come across any, let me know. I'd love to watch it. Also, tell me what you think about everything I've discussed. Don't be afraid to subscribe and I'll keep making these strange videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.